Hi, I'm Scott Davis, and welcome to New World Birth. By accessing this presentation, you're inviting me to share this information regarding our passage through this challenging and very hopeful time. This is the care and feeding of a New World Age for the Gregorian date of September 5th, 2012, and one read in the Mayan Zol King calendar. Uh, we're also going to discuss uh, Venus moving into Leo, the Virgo New Moon, and uh, Mercury moving into Libra. Uh, so uh, this one, this report's going to be a little shorter than they usually are, uh, as I've sustained an eye injury uh, a little over a week ago, and it's uh, still in the healing process. Uh, I wonder if this is what it felt like for Odin of uh, Norse mythology when he uh, exchanged the sight of one of his eyes for wisdom. I'm definitely getting some wisdom out of this one. Uh, and please bear with me as I read through this report. Um, and thank you for that. Anyway, uh, September 5th is one ben or reed or corn, which carries the themes of growth and sustenance, journeying in new directions, photosynthesis, protectors of the home and family, uh, the world tree energy that connects heaven and earth, uh, peace, harmony, and order, uh, strength in being flexible, the crusader or champion, and sharing with others. And Quetzalcoatl, the god-king feathered serpent, was prophesied to return in the year of one reed. Uh, Quetzalcoatl is qu credited for replacing human sacrifice with flowers, songs, and meditation. The reed uh, connects light energy uh, with earth energy uh, um, in an uh, integration of uh, multiple, di multiple, di multi-dimensional existence. Uh, anyway, this Tresena is a time for being grateful for our family and home. So share your most precious home, which is your open and loving heart. Anyway, astrologically, the uh, one read Tresena begins with the three outer planets being Pluto uh, and uh, Neptune and Uranus uh, being uh, retrograde, but all the other planets are appearing to move in uh, forward motion. Uh, Pluto appears to be slowing down to a standstill where it's really at the peak of its power uh, before moving direct on the 18th, which is one transformation. And I really think that's a very cool synchronicity uh, because both Pluto and transformation really cover the same topic area of death and rebirth, uh, letting go of something in order to ha have something new come in. Uh, and uh, so I just... I, I dig that stuff. Uh, and it happens that the very next day is the second Uranus-Pluto square, and that Pluto Uranus-Pluto square is in tight aspect uh, for the uh, equinox uh, a couple days later, uh, and that will be the uh, autumn equinox in the north and the spring equinox in the south. And equinoxes and solstices we, we, when we look at their as astrological charts, they really give us an insight to the upcoming season, the next three months. So the time period leading up to this infamous, you know, solstice on December 21st, 2012, which is also uh, the end of the Mayan long count, seems to be marked with upheaval. So I, I honestly, I think just enjoy this time right now because things are going to get very, very interesting. Uh, in the next three months. So here are the details of the daily energy of this Tresena. September 5th is one read, which is unity being experienced through maintaining the home with Mercury uh, being stimulated by Mars. So we've got Mercury here, and from the perspective of the Earth, it's at a 60 degree angle, which we call a, a sextile, to Mars. And um, and uh, that can be kind of difficult as people feel irritable and communications may feel uh, more like confrontations. Um, and on that day, we have the Taurus moons being opposed by Mars and it finds support from Pluto and, uh, and, and support from Pluto and Mercury and the sun, uh, which uh, the day's emotional energies is intensified, aggravated, verbalized, 
and then later it later kind of eases up somewhat. The the six is uh, two jaguar, which is about duality being experienced through enjoying na uh, nature. And on that day, we've got Venus will be moving into uh, Leo, um, which really kind of lights the mood uh, through the end of the month and into the first uh, couple of days of October. Uh, and September 7th is Three Eagle, which is about taking action through seeing from a higher perspective as the sun is challenged by Jupiter. So what it means by that? is there's a 90 degree angle or a square between the sun and Jupiter as seen uh, from the Earth. Uh, and this is favorable for getting ahead with some desire, but it could also bring like time being wasted on something that just seems very, very important. And then later you realize that that importance was exaggerated. Uh, as uh, the, the Gemini moon harmonizes with Venus and Uranus and is challenged by Neptune, the day begins with a confusing uh, emotional energy, uh, but it, it's good for finding common ground, but there's also really this uh, uh, possibility of, of deception and, and deceiving people and being deceived. Uh, but later, uh, the energy shifts to being very inspirational. All in all, it's a day uh, to use caution in financial involvements. Uh, the eighth is for wisdom, this is about finding stability through reflection, meditation, and forgiveness. And on that day, uh, we have Mercury uh, being challenged by Jupiter. So again, forming a 90 degree angle or a square, uh, which uh, uh, might may uh, make us aware that our ideas and goals uh, may be overinflated uh, as the last quarter moon. Uh, it is challenged by Mercury and the Sun and merges with Jupiter, uh, which cautions uh, about making any major decisions due to uh, exaggeration or uncertainty. And then September 9th is Five Earth, which is uh, being empowered through gratitude for Mother Earth. As the Moon is supported by Saturn and Neptune, the day begins with emotional stability and then later moves to empathy, intuition, uh, and sensitivity to uh, psychic realms. And then on the 10th, we have Six Flint, which is about uh, being in the flow uh, through being introspective as the sun merges with Mercury. So actually at that point, Mercury would be right about here on the back side of the sun and so from the perspective of the earth the two are what we call conjunct meaning that they are in the, on the same line um, and we should increase the number of uh, conversations but also uh, it, it, that actually uh, uh, um, uh, will uh, be a time when uh, we become aware of the uh, we make a commitment to the course correction that we became aware of back on July 28th uh, when the sun last merged with Mercury, uh, but at that point it was retrograde Mercury and it was on the front side of the sun. Um, and uh, so uh, on that day we also have uh, the Cancer moon being opposed by Pluto, challenged by Uranus, and supported by Mars. Uh, which can bring profound emotions uh, and hasty behavior and later gives the ability to assert ourselves in a positive manner. Uh, then September 11th, we've got Seven Storm. This is reflection through recognizing the gifts and adversity. Uh, the Cancer Moon harmonizes with the Sun and Mercury and is challenged by Saturn. Uh, the day's emotional energy begins with feelings of equanimity between our inner and outer worlds and then increases our social interactions and finally may have us uh, feeling a little lonely and out of touch. The twelfth is eight sun. This is about balance being experienced through honoring the wisdom and memory of our ancestors as the Leo moon merges with Venus and is supported by Uranus and challenged by Mars. Uh, the day's emotional energy moves from cheerful, gregarious, and craving some emotional excitement 
but later shifts to irritability and rash actions, which could lead to needless disputes. And then we've got September 13th, which is Nine Crocodile, which is about patience through nurturing new beginnings. And on that day, we've got Venus being supported uh, by Uranus, which is here, which means that from the perspective of the Earth, this is a 120 degree angle, which we call a trine. Uh, and this brings unexpected but pleasant social interactions, new experiences with people we know, and the opportunity to meet new people. With the moon in Leo harmonizing with Jupiter, uh, which supports uh, congenial socializing. The 14th is 10 wind, which is about manifestation through communications. Uh, as the moon harmonizes with Saturn, is opposed by Neptune, supported by Pluto. The day shifts from wanting to be alone in our thoughts and feelings uh, to later having uh, emotional sensitivity that, may, that might not be completely accurate to finally having uh, just really intensified emotions. And then on uh, September 15th, we have 11 night. This is about resolution through contemplating the stars. And the Virgo new moon is stimulated by Mars uh, and challenged by Jupiter uh, and then merges with the sun. Uh, and new moons are about new beginnings. And this one is about freedom through letting go of the past and nurturing our bodies as well. Um, you know, and you might want to set an intention uh, you wish uh, to manifest uh, regarding uh, the house of your astrological chart, which contains the 23 degrees of Virgo, where the new moon will be occurring, and trying to you know bring that to fruition by the full moon. And for me, that's the fourth house, uh, which uh, represents the home, but also my inner world. Uh, so perhaps I'll have a day of uh, listening to music while I clean house. And uh, hopefully the house will be totally clean by the full moon. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, the 16th is 12 seed, which is about understanding through making new connections and planting new seeds. And on that day, uh, Mercury moves into Libra. So it will move past this line and into this side in Libra. Uh, and that brings the, like, the desire for harmonious communications, harmony being Libra, communications, Mercury. Uh, but it also activates the uh, Pluto and Uranus square, because it's going to be right here, which will then put it uh, directly opposite of Uranus. And, in a, in a, and then both of those will be squaring uh, 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 Pluto. Uh, squaring the Earth, Pluto will be squaring, seen as squaring those uh, from the perspective of the Earth. Uh, and that creates what we call a T-square. And uh, th this is a, uh, will really kind of bring the need to adjust our thinking, Mercury, regarding uh, the need to let go of something Pluto as something new is being born, Uranus. As the moon merges with Mercury, is challenged by Pluto and opposed by Uranus, the day begins, uh, brings uh, moods that are strongly influencing our thoughts and then later shift to compulsion, re compulsive reactions and impulsive behaviors that ha may have us leaping to unwarranted conclusions. And then September 17th, this is 13 Serpent, its movement to the next stage through being flexible with the uh, Libra moon in harmony with Venus and supported by Jupiter. This is a day to be with the people you love and experience a pleasant sense of well-being, which I, you know, I think is an awesome energy for the day before one transformation and, and, the, and Pluto uh, turning direct. Um, so no matter how these energies are affecting you uh, during this one read, Tresena, take some time out to be in the flow of the planet by being in nature and watching a sunrise or a sunset or communing with the stars or and being conscious of the moment through introspection or meditation or being with someone you love and just being fully present with that person. You know, every single day we have is a blessing, no matter what dramas are beckoning to distract us. And we're all here giving the performance of a lifetime uh, on this world stage. So just remember that you are a spiritual being 
having a human experience. I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth. Uh, the next segment of Care and Feeding of a New World Age will be on September 18th for One Transformation. And we'll also discuss Pluto turning direct and the sun moving into Libra and the Aries full moon and that infamous second Uranus Pluto square. Um, you can check us out on Facebook or YouTube or even the Mayan Magic's website. And I invite you to email me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com. Uh, if you have any questions about this or you'd like to schedule a reading, and I am providing readings, uh, and I wish to make this service available to the greatest amount of folks. So I've created three options with three levels of compensation. Uh, these readings are designed to provide information to help you navigate all these difficult times ahead. Uh, at the basic level, we're going to look at your human design chart to help you understand how to use your individual strategy and authority in making life decisions based on your unique design. Uh, and then I include uh, three months, uh, the next three months of astrological transits as they relate to your natal and progressed astrology chart along with the human design reading at the middle level and then at the, at the top level. The human design reading uh, and the astrological transit reading are actually, uh, I record them and then I send the, the, it to you as an MP3 file that you can download to your computer and listen to over and over again while reviewing the charts that I email you as well. Uh, so if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would really love to provide you a reading uh, during uh, these uncertain times. Uh, you'll need to either be able to call me uh, in Maine in the USA or connect with Skype uh, to receive the reading. Uh, as always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time out con to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries and their application to our, uh, uh, to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. En la cash.